This is the fourth section of the forces and motion chapter. And here we're going to be looking at motion in two dimensions. Basically, in this chapter, we're going to be uh, using F equals MA with vectors. With vectors. Now, when we're talking about vectors, we're talking about these unit vectors I and J. Now, sometimes we represent a vector like this. Often when we're doing calculations with vectors, particularly when we're using it with forces or later on with SUVAP, you may find it more convenient to represent a vector like this as a column vector. Now you can do it either way, but you might find this just a bit more, a uh, bit easier when we're doing calculations. So since we're using uh, vectors here, F equals MA is going to look something like this, either something like this. So this is going to be representing our force of vector, uh, or representing the force as a vector equals some type of mass. Okay, so this is going to be a scalar. It's going to be a number multiplied by the acceleration. And the acceleration is also going to be written as a vector. So something like this. So you can see written in a long line like this, it's um, a bit tricky looking. There's our acceleration there. That's why I said if we write things as a column, it may be easier. So if we've got something like this, there's our force. And then the mass times by the acceleration. Just a bit easier to write out, a bit easier to deal with our calculations. So the force is a vector quantity. The acceleration is a vector quantity. The mass will be a scalar. And we just multiply this out. OK, so we've got three forces, F1, F2 and F3, act on a particle of mass 3 kg, find the acceleration of the particle. Well, the first thing we need to do is to find the resultant force okay that's the sum of the forces so that's f1 plus f2 plus f3 I suppose I should underline them because these are vectors vector quantities so that's going to be 2i plus 4j plus negative uh, 5i plus 4j and then 6i underline a little bit 6i minus 5j and then I want to find what all of that is now if I'd written these as vectors you'll see it's just a little bit easier 2 4 plus negative 5 4 plus 6 minus 5 see how much easier that is either way I'll get the same answer so 2 minus 5 is minus 3 plus 3 is going to or plus 6 is going to be 3 so 3i 3 4 plus 4 is 8 minus 5 is going to be plus 3. Okay, so that's the resultant force. Now, if I do it this way, you just see it's a little bit easier. 2 minus 5 minus 3 plus 6, 3. And then the bottom bit, 8 minus 5, 3. Yeah, just a little bit easier. So that's our resultant force there. So using Newton's second law, which is going to be that F equals MA. So the resultant force I'm going to do as a column. 3, 3 equals the mass. Now the mass is 3 times by the acceleration. Now we don't know the acceleration, let's just call that AB. Right now, for this to balance, both A needs to equal 1 and B needs to equal 1. So if we write our acceleration in IJ form like this using unit vectors. 1i plus 1j meter per second squared. Okay, so here we've got a boat modeled as a particle of mass 60 kg being acted on by three forces. Given that the acceleration is this, find the values of P and Q. Right, now what does that mean? It means that the resultant force equals the mass times the acceleration. So let me write down what the resultant force is. That's F1 
plus F2 plus F3. So that's going to be 8050 plus 10P 20Q plus negative 75, 100. So what does that give us as a resultant force? So uh, 8 minus 75, so that's 5 plus 10P. And then 150 plus 20Q. So there's my resultant force, which will equal the mass times the acceleration. So 150 plus 20Q. Okay, that's a one there. Equals the mass, 60, the scalar, times by the acceleration, which is 0 0.8 and negative 1.5. Right, so let's work out what the right-hand side is. So if we work out 60 times by 0 0.8, so we're going to get 48. And then on the bottom row, 60 times by negative 1.5, we get negative 90. OK, so that's what this equals. 5 plus 10p, 150 plus 20q. Now all we need to do is we'll take the top row. That will give us one equation to find p. And we'll take the bottom row. That gives us another equation which we can use to find Q. So we have 5 plus 10P equals 48. So from there we will get 10P equals 43. Which means P equals 4.3. And then from the bottom line that's in blue, we'll have 150 plus 20Q equals negative 90 so that will give us 20q equals we might see what negative 90 minus 150 sorry plus 150 so that will give us 200 or negative 240 negative 240 and that will give us q what p Q equal to negative 240 divided by 20, which I believe will be negative 12. So we'll just highlight those. P 4.3 Q negative 12. We should now be able to do exercise 10D on pages. 167 to 169. So what we've done here is apply f equals ma to vectors where f is going to be a vector, a will be a vector, and m will be a scalar, just a, a number. And in these questions, it's normally uh, easier to deal with the vector as a column when you do your working rather than um, have it written in the ij notation so if we had something like this then we would get from the top row a equals m times c and the bottom row b equals m times d so each row gives you an equation which you can solve